Want to start a worm farm to recycle your food waste and make awesome soil? We're going to go back to the basics and show you how to start a worm farm from scratch. My name is Steve Churchill, and this is the Urban Worm Company. I'm going to assume you're somewhat new to vermicomposting. Well, congratulations, because it's an awesome way to recycle your own food waste at home without any energy usage or transportation cost. And your reward in the end is an incredible soil amendment that literally adds life to your soil. Worms may be the most visible player in our worm farm, but vermicomposting begins and ends with microorganisms. Before organic waste can be consumed by worms, it first must go through some amount of decomposition, mainly by bacteria. As the bacteria-covered organic waste makes its way through a worm's gut, those microbes accept explode in population and diversity, giving you a microbe-rich worm poop covered in a mucus filled with microorganisms that can revitalize your soil. Now, I hope you weren't eating when I just said that, but in a worm bin, that worm poop will boost the micro population to attack even more organic waste. It's a virtuous cycle. So in this video, we're gonna start a worm bin from scratch by first fostering an environment where microbes can thrive, which will then create a habitat where composting worms can thrive. Now, before I begin, many of you know that I manufacture the Urban Worm Bag, a fabric worm farm made for recycled plastic bottles. The bag's design allows for a relatively worm-free harvest from the bottom of the bag while the worms keep working on the waste above. I'd love for you to buy one, but to be honest, you truly don't need one if you're just starting out. So today, we're going to use a simple 7-gallon tote and common household waste to start our bin. So let's get started. First, find yourself that bin. It's going to cost you 15 bucks or so at a big box store. You can also use a larger tote, but I find that a 7-10-gallon to 10 gallon tote is easier to move and provides plenty of depth for a starter worm farm. We're gonna wanna modify our tote though to make sure it stays an aerobic environment for the worms and microbes. So first, let's drill dozens of holes no larger than a quarter inch in the top few inches of the sidewalls. You can also drill holes in the lid as well, but if you're keeping your bin outdoors or somewhere where it's gonna be exposed to rain, you wanna keep your holes on the side and not the top. Drilling holes is gonna create some amount of plastic shavings, so you're gonna wanna remove those before you start your worm farm to prevent any plastics from getting into your vermicompost. For a little more of a sophisticated set up, you can use an identical bin to serve as a catch for leachate, which would otherwise pool in the bottom of your bin. Now, I advise against running your worm farm so wet that it produces leachate, but it's hard not to make some amount of leachate, especially in the beginning. If you want to use this second bin, then you'll also need to drill holes in the bottom of the first bin. Then you can use bricks or something else to serve as a spacer between the bottom of the first bin and the bin you'll be using to catch that leachate. Guys, starting a worm bin is only the first step, and you're about to go down a giant rabbit hole of vermicomposting information. I want to make it as easy as possible. So I took our epic length ultimate guide to vermicomposting blog post and turned it into a 60 page ebook. If you click this little link above my left shoulder or check the video description for that link, you can sign up for our email list and get that ebook immediately. Now back to starting our worm farm. So now that we have our bin, it's time to add our bedding. And bedding is any absorbent carbon rich material that can balance out the more acidic high nitrogen food waste that we're going to be putting in our worm farm. Food waste is normally going to be more than 85% water content. So we need bedding's absorbency to sop up that that moisture as the food waste breaks down. You can find great sources of bedding in your home, in your yard, and if necessary at the store or online. The most common bedding for whole worm bin owners is paper and cardboard. I don't think it necessarily makes the best worm castings, but it's simply the easiest to source. The stuff needs to be shredded. While you could do that by hand, I would put it through a shredder, specifically a crosscut shredder, which turns it into tiny little squares. It's going to expose the surface area in the bedding and help it break down more quickly. Make sure though to get a 12 sheet shredder so since it will be strong enough to shred corrugated cardboard. Don't buy an eight sheet shredder. You're gonna thank me later. I've got a link to the one I use in the video description. I bought it from a little mom and pop outfit called Amazon. That was a joke. Other options for bedding are peat moss, cocoa core, and a product called pit moss made from recycled paper and cellulose products. Another free source of bedding you can find in your yard is leaf mold, which will be leaves that have undergone months of decomposition. Regardless of the bedding you use, I highly recommend adding some amount of a living material like that leaf mold, compost, or vermicompost. Now, bedding is misunderstood by new worm farmers. Unlike other animals, worms eat their bedding, so there's never a need to change it out. So in our worm bin, we're gonna start with a four to six inch layer of bedding, and today I'm gonna be using a combination of paper, cardboard, and pit moss. But this bedding needs to be thoroughly moist in order to boost the microbes. So I'm going to soak the bedding for 24 hours in another tote or bucket. You don't want to soak living material like vermicompost, compost, or leaf mold. That stuff should have enough moisture on its own. Once that 24 hours is up, we're going to wring out that bedding as much as we can and put it into our bin and add a layer or so of living material if we've got it. If you don't have any living material like the leaf mold, the compost, or vermicompost, then I highly recommend adding one or two cups of food waste in your bedding. Remember, we're trying to first cultivate microbes before we ever put worms in the bin. And this 
This food waste will serve as a magnet and a ready food source for bacteria. Mix this food waste into your bedding and then cover your bin. Then order worms. For a tote this size, I would order a pound of composting worms max. For a larger bin like an urban worm bag, I'd go for one or two pounds. And you can check the video description for a coupon code and a link to buy composting worms from us. While you're waiting on your worms, the stew of wet organic waste food waste and living material will serve as a breeding ground for bacteria and make for a hospitable environment for the worms when they arrive. When those worms arrive, go ahead and put them straight into your bin. They'll make their way down into the bedding on their own, but you can help them do that by putting your open worm farm under a bright light. Worms hate light and will dive into their bedding to avoid it. To force the worms to acclimate, I would keep the bin open under that light for the first 24 hours. Unless it was something truly noxious about your bedding, you're gonna find that there's really no chance of escape. They're gonna hate that light more than they hate their new bedding. So you got worms in their bedding with a little bit of food waste? Now what? You wait. Again, give the worms two days in their new home and then start with a one to two cup feeding of food waste and bedding. I would give a tote like this no more than a single cup of food waste and two cups of dry bedding each week in the beginning. You're going to want this food waste to be non-meat, non-dairy food waste. No meat or cheese. We got a great video on what to feed worms here. And in the video description, you're going to see a post that I did on the topic, and that's going to give you even more information. So how should we be preparing our food waste? You should at least cut your food waste into smaller pieces when you can. And if you want to get fancy, you can blend it. Freezing your food waste is a great way to store it for when you need it. It's going to kill any fruit fly larva, and it's also going to speed up decomposition once it starts thawing. Whatever you do, your feedings should be two parts bedding to one part food waste, and this is by volume. It's going to seem like a lot of bedding, but you're going to want it to absorb the moisture from your food waste and help keep your pH in check in your worm farm. I suggest mixing the food waste and bedding together, putting it in the bin, and placing a layer of newsprint, bubble wrap, or even an urban worm blanket on top of the vermicompost to help trap a little bit of moisture. Every now and then, I also suggest adding grit to your worm bin. Worms don't have teeth, so the grit allows the worms to grind the waste as it makes their way through the digestive tract. You can use finely ground eggshells or something as simple as playground sand for your source of grit. So you're probably wondering when you should be able to feed again. Well, when the food waste is really no longer recognizable and the top of the vermicompost is flat, that's your sign that it's okay to start feeding again. Now guys, moisture management is a huge deal in a worm bin, and normally food waste has more than enough water. But if you live in a dry climate, you might find that you need to add moisture. If so, only do it with a spray bottle on a mist setting. Never pour water in a worm bin. Your bedding can only absorb so much at one time, so adding too much means that your water is going to run straight down to the bottom. Or if you added that second bin as a catch like I talked about earlier, the water is just going to collect down there and won't do anything for your vermicompost anyways. Gang, there's a whole lot I didn't cover in this video, and I don't think you wanted to watch an hour-long video anyways. We've got a ton of great content on this channel and on our website, and chances are I've probably already answered a lot of your questions. So make sure to subscribe and check out our other videos. And check out the video description for a coupon code you can use to get 10% off most of the products on our site, whether it's the Urban Worm Bag, Worm Castings, or the worms you need to get started. Congratulations on your new worm bin. We're going to see you on the next video.